So when I first got um, invited to meet Pope Francis, I uh, the producers of, of the well, I, essentially, when I invited um, Dallas to to meet Pope Francis uh, along with me, because I just felt it would, it just made sense, and. I think he started talking about it with some of the producers at the Chosen, and then they came to me and they said, "Hey, we want to we want to capture this encounter on video. Would you be okay with that?" And I said, "Sure, a little something for posterity." I'm like, great. And then a little bit after, they're like, "Well, you know what? Actually, we're thinking like this might be a good sort of jump off point for this idea for a series um, where you basically connect with these various." different spiritual leaders and and uh speakers and artists and and people who have been impacted by Jesus and 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 talk to them and meet with them uh and then you know we sort of then also capture what your life is like now playing this character and what the impact is on not only you but the the fans who follow you and um and just try to get a little bit of a sense of, of what that might be like and i thought it was a it was a wild idea i'd never seen anything like it before and i and i prayed about it and i thought well maybe this is something that god wants me to do and somehow it can ultimately serve to inspire some someone by hearing my stories of surrender and what god's done in my life since since uh, more deeply surrendering to him um, and the success that I've had as a result of, of that commitment to, to, to Christ. Um, so yeah, let's do it. And, and that's kind of what kicked it off. Yeah, it's been, um, it's been pretty surreal. Um, yeah, I can't, uh, I, I, I can't imagine. Yeah, I, I don't even know what I was going to say. It's 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 been something that uh, it's taken time for me to to come to terms with, uh, but I think it it's happened at a point in my life where God's timing is is perfect timing. It didn't happen any earlier, and it didn't happen any later. Um, it it happened when it was supposed to happen. And so um, I, I just feel like I, I'm I'm trying to navigate the the comfort level of being recognized still. I don't know if that ever gets easy or or comfortable completely. Uh, it, it's gotten easier, but I uh, I think it's definitely something that it takes it takes some 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 thick skin and discipline and and learning to set boundaries especially if you're somebody that is uh as much of uh of an empathetic soul as, as i consider myself to be so um yeah it's it's been extraordinary and and any kind of discomfort that i might derive from the process uh, my instinct is to just turn it over and just give it up and offer it up um, for God, because at the end of the day, um, you know, whether it's the docuseries or the chosen or anything else that I do, um, if people are affected by it in some way or moved by it or inspired by it, uh, I mean, that's, that's the goal of it, you know, is, is to bring light to people's lives and to bring Jesus into the culture in a meaningful way to affect change, to affect interior change, to affect outward change, cultural change. And, and this is just a part of um, the equation. And uh, you can't have success as an actor without people getting to know who you are, um, which is why I wanted to be in voiceover and uh, never really wanted to be on camera. And God had a different plan, obviously. So I'm just trying to uh, flex with that. I don't think it was quite the same because their onstage personas um, were very different from their themselves than who they are in 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 their day to day life. Right. Um, 
granted when i'm when i'm playing when i'm working um I, i'm 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 playing when i'm playing jesus for instance you know uh there's still an element of me that's always there it's like my humanity informs how i play the character right. um but i'm not you know i'm not trying to hide behind jesus i'm trying to get closer to jesus but i'm not using him as an excuse to to do things i maybe wouldn't do normally like let's say if, if in brandon's case let's say if, if he he's he's kind of quiet you know in in real life and if when he's on stage and he's you know being the lead singer of the killers he's much more outgoing and so when i first met him um and i kind of asked asked him this question in, in in the series it's like you have such uh you have a very specific idea of who somebody is just by seeing their work and how they perform and as a singer like I, i'm not a professional singer um so i i don't know what it is to build a character as a singer you know it's same thing with alice cooper um so so that's it's a it, it's really interesting for me so i wouldn't have expected um that you know they would be much different uh well i mean in, in brandon's case specifically that he would be much different from who he is on stage only to find out he's almost 180 degrees different from like this this glittery glitzy glam like rock god you know what i mean and uh and so i think you know he he's one of the things he says is like for 90 minutes he gets to be this other character you know and um like a sh basically like a showman um mm -hmm. for me it's like i hope to bring more aspects of jesus's character into my life on a daily basis um which isn't hiding behind the character but it's incorporating the, the the character in into every facet of my of my daily life it's very different with jesus i mean there's there's i don't know how many other characters an actor can play where where you can say i want to bring every part of this character into my daily life because of what he means to me i don't know that there's anyone else you can say that about I, I have I, I've had people say like you you might want to downplay your faith a little bit um, because it's not really it's not really a thing that's going to win you over you know to to people in you know in uh, casting films and TV shows it's like people are more I think in Hollywood especially people are are kind of um, nervous about talking about their faith uh, in in a business setting I never was I you know I. I was just, I'm happy to talk about it, you know, to anyone who wants to talk to me about it. But, you know, getting that kind of advice was was a little strange and disappointing, but I also wasn't surprised because that's kind of what I had heard about. And I just see how people um, react and, and, and how, uh, and how, you know, you, you look at the majority of of the, the work that is put out in the secular world and, um, you know, faith isn't a, a um a, a typical uh element that that people are are dealing with in in a film or a tv show unless it's very specific to the show's storyline like with you know with the chosen it's mm -hmm. it's it's very much the storyline but um that's also like we're, we, we've created a world there where it's just like well these are people who are very uh, devoted people to to their God, the God of Israel, and now there's a guy that's kind of challenging the their notions, and so so re religion becomes part of the storyline. Um, but in 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 you know if you look at if, if we're talking about modern films where you know you have a family or and, and there's a plot line and it's very uh, it's not very. Um, frequent where you see uh, any kind of a faith storyline you know f uh, filling in or fleshing out the characters so um it's it's a reflection i think of of i think what most people feel about discussing matters of faith uh in in the workplace in hollywood especially but i have right. you know again i mean i'm i think the fact that i i i i've surrendered any notion of you know what kind of control i have over my career and I just say Lord will you tell me where you want me to go and if if somebody wants to 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 cast me in something beyond Jesus when when the chosen is done great if not great 
doesn't it doesn't matter to me i mean it does i would love to work at course but i i i'm i trust god and and everything he does he's gonna show me where he wants me to be and and the roles he wants me to play and and uh hopefully there'll be some interesting stuff outside of the the that kind of uh box and um yeah but i'll you know whatever he does whatever he wants for me that's good enough for me hope they get inspired to surrender whatever it is they might be struggling with in their own lives that are keeping them back i think that's the the theme for me with this in the docu series is that you know I, I got to this point because i i had to let go of the reins i had to let go of control and as a result god changed my life irrevocably and i think there are a lot of people that are afraid to surrender. They're afraid to give things over to God, whether it's their personal life, their health, their finances, their career. And the way it works, I've found with him, is that when you completely rely on him, he takes care of you because he's that's what he's promised to do. And he, he never goes back on his word. It's just, are you going to take him up on his word and really, really take him up on his word? And when you do take him up on his word and you do let go, you feel a shift. It's it's a literal conversion. In fact, um, Father Walter Chiswick, who, who spent uh, 15 years in a Siberian labor camp and five years in solitary confinement in the 50s, 40s and 50s, um, I think the 50s, uh, yeah, 40s and 50s, um, he talks about the moment of his own surrender when he completely surrendered his circumstances and he went through torture interrogation the whole thing when he completely surrendered there was this and he was being interrogated every day for an, an entire year there was this complete shift this conversion of spirit that everything that was coming his way was given to him by god and the minute he accepted that everything changed for him and they couldn't they couldn't break him anymore and and he went on to write this book called he leadeth me which i recommend anybody read because you want to talk about hardcore surrender amidst the most brutal circumstances um his story is it but his description of what it means to surrender and the effect it has and how it manifests itself within your spirit it's the same whether you're, you're in a siberian prison camp or you're in a studio apartment in LA, completely broke and, and almost out of food. The, the process is the same, the change is the same, and the fruit of that change is consistent across the board. So right. that's the long answer. The short answer is I hope people embrace surrender um, yeah. to God in whatever they're experiencing.